please get, help me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Richard Hayes. Thank you. All right, so are we on? You can all hear. And so thank you, Jack, and also uh, Tanya and Katrina for uh, getting me here and getting me uh, situated and uh, staffed up. And I thought maybe what I'd like to do is just say a, a couple words about uh, how I got uh, concerned about these technologies and involved, and then about the Center for Genetics and Society, and then what we're going to do today, and then we'll get right into it. So as Jack mentioned, uh, my background is in the environmental movement. I was on the national staff of the Sierra Club for a long time. And then I guess um, in the early 90s left to begin doctoral studies at Berkeley and uh, was looking at the long-range environmental future and its impact on the environment and humanity and uh, knew very early on, especially interested in global warming, that uh, technology was very central to anything that's going to happen. And uh, so did a fairly thorough survey of the new technologies, and certainly information technology and materials, and then, of course, biotechnology. Um, took courses, um, talked to uh, scientists, went to conferences, and it was only then uh, that level of getting into it, that it really struck me, really understood uh, how profoundly consequential these new t biotechnologies could be, uh, both for better or for ill, how rapidly they were being developed, how well below the radar screen of both the general public and policymakers any of this was, and how thin the structure of uh, social oversight, regulation, control was. So this was very concerning, and uh, on top of that, uh, you would hear various noted authors and even Nobel laureates um, as these technologies were becoming more and more practicable, closer and closer to actually being used, rather than, if you will, uh, raising voices of you know, both hope and optimism, but also caution and concern. There was this sort of hyper-enthusiasm for, wow, isn't it going to be great? We're going to be able to genetically modify our children to be a super species. And you first start hearing about that, and you say, what are they talking about? But then you realize they're very serious. This is of some concern, as you'll see in the discussion here. So uh, myself and others, we held a conference at UC Berkeley to find out who was um, working to educate the general public, policymakers, other civil society constituencies, professionals about these technologies, and found there was very little going on. And that was then the uh, origin of the Center for Genetics and Society. And so that's our purpose, is to get the word out about the way these technologies and others related to the genetic technologies are developing, uh, with an eye towards, if you will, and you're here at Sandia, you're obviously familiar with the, uh, the concept of dual use, right? So these technologies can be used for many benign, beneficent medical applications, both preventing and curing disease, alleviating suffering, but they could also be used for pernicious reasons and reasons that, and applications that could divide human beings and society. And so the challenge, and I think it's one of the biggest challenges that humanity has literally ever faced, and we're only going to face it once in a fairly narrow window, is how to understand these technologies and then how to set up the types of structures, rules and regulations that will allow them to be used in ways that truly enhance human well-being and are not used in ways that degrade the quality of our lives and our relationships. So I'll be going into a, a lot of this right now.